Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I am here to do my wrap up for May 2023. I was involved in a number of booktube events. Horror Mayhem, 20th Century Horror, hosted by Michael Romeo Talks Books. Uh, May of the Mar Moderns, hosted by Margaret Bernard, and um, the Thomas Bernhard Reading Group, hosted by the Channel of the Disappointed Man. I don't want to forget the Gothic Horror Reading Group, hosted by Vin at Revenant Reads. Now, I am only going to give reviews of my top five favorite books of this month, because I read an awful lot of books, and if I gave a review of each book, it would be way too long. So only the top five will be discussed in detail. I will break down the other books that I read with a, a simple hot or not or okay, and maybe a one sentence description to keep this video at a reasonable length. So what were my top favorite? The Fisherman by John Langan. Langan. This is a short horror novel read for Horror Mayhem. It was an audiobook, and this is a really good short horror novel. It starts off with a narrator. He's, I'm guessing, in his late 50s, and his wife passed away from cancer when he was younger. And in order to get over his grief, he started fishing. When he first started fishing, he had no idea what he was doing, but he muddled along and it became his way of life, how he dealt with his, his grief and his, the emptiness that he felt without his wife. And um, that lasted for a long time. And then he was working in his job. There was another man who worked with him and he lost his wife and child in a tragic car accident. And he saw the other man going through the same sorts of grief that he went through when he lost his wife. And he decided, I'm going to invite this man fishing with me. See if it helps. And it did. They both became rather good friends or acquaintances, and they went out fishing. And then one day, the narrator's friend said, I want to try out this new spot that I discovered in an obscure fishing journal. Now, the, the narrator had never heard of this spot, but he decided, let's go see it. And there was something queer about the way this man had discovered this, this spot. And the way, when they went out to look for it, they stopped off at a, a morning diner and they talked to the cook an owner, who then tells them a story about this spot. And this spot has a bit of history. Now, I won't go too much into the detail because it takes up a very large chunk of the book. It's sort of like a story within a story, but it's a dang good story. And it is creepy because it introduces characters that are, you know, you know if you read horror, those, those kind of characters. And then after the story is done, they decide to proceed to this spot. And let's just say it is just as creepy or creepier than the story that the, that the old cook told. And now this would be considered sort of a cosmic horror story because it deals with elements beyond humanity and the things that they find at this fishing spot. And if you like horror, I can highly, highly recommend this book. It is a great short novel in the cosmic horror tradition. The second great book that I read was The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. This is the winner of the Pulitzer Prize a number of years ago. It is an historical novel for the most part. It does start very briefly 
and modern times. When people doing some work in Florida uncover a grave, an unmarked grave of bodies, and there is a, a man who reads about that grave site. And he says, I have to come forward and tell what happened there. Because he was there about and knew a lot about what went into that gravesite. And as it turns out, it was the gravesite of prisoners, juvenile prisoners, who sent, were sent to a juvenile detention center. I believe it's the 50s in Florida. And it is a nasty little center where the, the prisoners have to work to keep the, the profits going for this detention center. And they are cruel to the, the prisoners. And it is a segregated prison. The, the blacks on one end, whites on the other, and the poor Hispanic character goes back and forth, not knowing where he belongs. Now, the narrator is an African-American. So you get to see the full bore racism that went on in that time in the United States. And it is just shocking to read about. I mean, I know it existed, and the details are not overly surprising because you know that's what people did back then. But it's still a rough book to read about the cruelty and racism that these young men went in or experienced in this detention center. And this book has a really good twist ending. It's so good they say, no, that can't be right. And then you think about it, oh yeah, the clues were there all along. And you read them and they go right over your head and go, yeah, that's one great twist of an ending. So that is also highly recommended. The Heretic by Liam McIlvaney. This was also an audio book. It is an historical mystery novel set in Glasgow, Scotland. Now, as I said, the audio is fantastic because the narrator has this really good Scottish accent. Some parts were a little, I had a little struggle a bit to understand because, you know, the Scottish accent is just a little bit different from the American. So, but it still added great flavor to the story. And the story is a good one. The Heretic is a direct sequel to the author's book, The Quaker. And um, I'm going to say right up front, you really need to read The Quaker before you pick up The Heretic, because there are some plot lines that are carried over from the first book and go into the second. There is at least one event where um, you say, oh, maybe when you finish The Quaker, you don't fully understand what happened. And then it is explained in The Heretic. Well, anyway, the, the main character is um, a detective inspector who um, had to leave Glasgow at the end of The Quaker. Now, he is um, gay. And at this time, at least in the, the, the Quaker and then the Heretic. Now, the Quaker, no, the Heretic is 1975 and the Quaker is about 1969. You could not be gay in public at that time in uh, Glasgow, Scotland. And so this detective inspector has to keep his, his sexuality undercover. And that plays a part in the stories. But in this one, he has come back to Glasgow and he is investigating a gangster. And they're not making too much progress. And then one day there is a um, tenement fire where a number of people died. And then there is a body that turned up in a garbage heap. And at first they don't know who this body is other than he's dressed kind of peculiar and um, it doesn't quite fit with the, the surroundings. So there, there is the investigation to find out who murdered this man and find out what happened in this tenement fire. And it goes on from there. And it is just a gripping good mystery that starts slowly unfolding as characters start slowly revealing the details that are needed to solve this crime. And it's a good, it, it's a good mystery. I mean, I, it, because it, it's realistic in the sense that all the characters have real motivations. They are not super villains and they're not super cops but it is just a solid mystery, and I definitely recommend it. 
Next is The Keep, um, that is by F. Paul Wilson. This counts for my 20th century horror novels, about horror novels written in the 20th century. This was written about 1980. Um, and it's a historical horror novel. It is set during World War II. There is a German officer who um, refuses to join the Nazi party, but he has a long career in the German army, so he is not removed, but he is sent to an outpost where he will not participate in the main war. It is a part of um, Romania. It is to guard a pass where maybe the Russians will come through and invade, or maybe not. It's, it's a calculated appointment saying, we need a regiment of men here to defend this pass. And there is an old keep which they start, which he inhabits. And oddly enough, even though this keep is 15th century, it is immaculate. There is a group of villagers who maintain this keep. They are paid secretly in gold to maintain the keep. And no one knows who owns the keep or where the source of the gold is, but the keep is maintained. And then one of the lowly German privates decides, you know, there's this thing that looks like a cross in the wall. It may be silver. I'm going to remove it. And of course, the soldier removes it, discovers a secret passage, and gets murdered. He gets, well, he gets beheaded. And then the next night, another soldier is murdered. On the third night, yet another soldier is murdered. Or is that the night two soldiers were murdered? Something like that. Well, anyway, the, the German officer reports back to headquarters saying, something is murdering my men. And so the, the, the army sends a, an SS officer to investigate and, and make sure this, this, this other German officer totes the line. But there is something in the keep murdering his men. And now, as I said, it is sort of a risk because um, you're talking about German officers in World War II, not exactly sympathetic characters. But uh, Wilson does a good job with the, the German officer who refuses to become a Nazi. That That is true to life, I think, I think as there were some people who did not want to join the German party. And that's that makes him acceptable. But then the novel takes another turn, and it turns out that this German officer is not going to be one of the main characters. There is a Jewish scholar who may have information of the key and his daughter. And then there is this mysterious man who is heading towards the keep. Now, the mysterious man and the murderer of the Germans are going to have a bit of a conflict. You know that coming up, so it's not much of a spoiler. But I highly enjoyed this book. Um, I did read it in the 80s, so this was a reread. There are more books in the series. It was not originally written as a series. The Keep was written as a standalone book. And then um, Wilson wrote two other independent horror novels. And then he started writing a direct sequel to The Keep, which... Um, reintroduces some of the old characters, if I remember correctly. And the other two novels that he um, wrote in between get incorporated at the very end. So it is something I want to reread a lot of fun. And the fifth book that I highly recommend is Woodcutters by Thomas Bernhardt. This is part of the Thomas Bernhardt reading group with the channel of the Disappointed Man. Now, Bernhardt is an acquired taste. He was a misanthropic Austrian author who was, let's just say, rather disappointed with his country during World War II with their capitulation with, with, with Germany and the Nazis. And his writing style is infamous. He is one paragraph for the entire book. There are no paragraph breaks. And essentially, the first half of the book, the narrator talks about meeting some old friends in um, downtown Vienna that he used to be great friends with when he was much younger, and they've sort of had a falling out as they've grown older. He's now in his 50s. But they tell him of a woman who committed suicide, and they sort of say that in a gloating manner. Oh, this woman committed suicide. She hung herself. 
And he was he had a relationship with this woman when he was younger. So he goes to this dinner party that they invited him to for a famous actor who was doing a uh, production of Ibsen's The Wild Duck. And he is sitting in his wing chair making comments about Austria and the people who are coming and going of this party. And he is just, let the vitriol spew. And that is Bernhard, spew the vitriol. And it is fabulous, it is interesting, um, but it is, it is an acquired taste. It is highly recommended if you like Thomas Bernhard and, and like that sort of novel. There's not really a plot-driven book. It's all about his ideas and observations. Okay, those are all the books that I am going to review. I will now mention every other book that I read very quickly. I'm going to uh, block them off. Books that I think are hot. An honorary member of the, the reading for May, actually finished at the very last day of April, is The Glass Key by Dashiell Hammett from May of the Moderns. It is a hard-boiled detective book. Um, it is not a continental law book, but still great. There is Ball by Robert R. McKemmon, a horror novel about occults. There is Dubliners by James Joyce. I did that as audio. Very famous collection of short stories in Ireland. There is, of course, The Spiders, a killer animal about book about killer spiders. There is Monstrilio by Geraldo Samano Cordova. Mother sees her child die. She removes a piece of his lung and grows his lung into a different kind of monster. Keeper of Children, also part of 20th century horror novels. This is a film director. Notice that his daughter has been indoctrinated into a cult and the cult has special powers, and he tries to get his daughter back. Dead Inside. This is an extreme, and the author of Dead Inside is Chandler Morrison. Um, extreme horror, extremely graphic, graphic, disgusting sex scenes, but pretty good for what it is. Killer. Crabs by Guy and Smith. This is a direct sequel to The Night of the Crabs. The crabs have returned, but this time they're in Australia. Now for the books that I think are only okay. Rationality, what it is, why it seems scarce, and why it matters by Stephen Pinker. He is a psychologist. He is describing why some people believe in flaky things. Across a Billion Years by Robert Silverberg, a digital book. Um, someone said this is one of Silverberg's best books. It is about alien archaeology, discovering an old race. It's really just okay. The String of Pearls, A Tale of Sweeney Todd and the Demon Barber of Fleet Street by James Malcolm Reiner. This was written as a penny dreadful. It's a lot of fun but don't expect anything grand. The Osterman Weekend by Robert Ludlum. A thriller set in the 70s. Pretty good, but not great. Since September by Shannon Hovey Digital. She is a fellow booktuber. And um, it's, it's a story of a woman who's slowly losing her mind. And now for the end, another one that's just okay is um, Clive Barker's Books of Blood, Volume 2. The stories in this volume are just not as good as the ones in Volume 1. So now on to the ones that are not so good. The Underdogs, Barbarino, uh, Asuela. This is the story of um, peasants in the Mexican Revolution. It was a buddy read with... Margaret Pennard, also part of May of the Moderns. Another last one was My Annihilation by Fuminari Nakamura, the digital, uh, translated from the Japanese. 
It starts off with a man who's having trouble with his memory and thinks he may be someone else. Not really a very good book. I, I was disappointed. Now, there are a few others that are sort of a DNF. This, one, this volume I completed this month as a combination of print and audio. It is 725 pages long. I am counting this as part of my May of the Moderns completed, even though there's a volume two, which is another thousand pages. But the way it is published, it was originally published in four volumes. And um, the first book that I read had the volume one and two. So I'm counting that as complete for May of the Moderns, but technically a DNF because um, I still have a thousand pages to go. Another DNF was Bulldog Drummond by H.C. McNeil. Um, that's part of um, uh, Edgar's Resurrectionist Book Club. Um, I was really enjoying it. It is a murder mystery. I just got sick for a couple days and sort of lost track of the book and never finished it. I started The Girl Next Door by Ruth Randall. This is one of her later mysteries about um, bodies discovered. They were murdered in World War II. I didn't finish it. And the last DNF was The Case of Comrade Tutelev by Victor Serge. This is set in Stalinist Russia, originally written in French. Um, I DNF'd it because I was just not ready for a book of this complexity and density. I will get back to it someday. And that is everything that I read in May. Thank you for watching me for all these books and keep on reading.